Okay, hello and welcome to uh, Legal Aid Civil Submission webinar. My name is my name is Karen Fletcher and I'm a Legal Aid Specialist here at Leap UK and with me is my colleague Kirstine Peruski, Legal Aid Manager, Leap UK. And today we'll be taking you through using the Leap Legal Aid app to invoice your civil control book Legal Aid Matters and then creating your monthly submission spreadsheet for upload to the CWA portal. We will be including controlled work billing for mental health, immigration and family matters and creating the monthly bulk code submission spreadsheet. We shouldn't take more than 30 minutes of your time today. The webinar is in listen only mode, which means that you can hear us, but we can't hear you. But if you do want to ask us something, please type it into the GoToWebinar chat and we'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end. So that you can share this with any colleagues who are unable to attend or rewatch it in your own time, we will be emailing each of you out a recording of today's webinar later today. The first matter that we are going to look at invoicing and for the submission will be a mental health matter. This is our mental health file. And before we can look at the invoicing side of things, we need to check that we've entered all the relevant reporting information, either on the client card or within the matter details. Firstly, if we click on our client's card, we are able to go into the people tab and double check that we have entered a date of birth for our client. And then from the custom tab, whether we've entered our disability, ethnicity and the UCN. Once we are happy that we have entered all of this information, we can click save and close. Once we've checked our client, we can go to our matter details in our details and correspondence section of our matter. And just double check that again, we've entered all the relevant reporting information that would be needed in here, such as set in the correct branch if we're a multi-branch firm, making sure our date opened is correct as that determines our UFN. Also for a controlled work matter, we will need to ensure that we've entered a procurement area and access point, a meeting code, schedule reference, and a tribunal reference if that should be required on this particular matter. We also need to ensure that a case stage level has been entered at this point because this determines our fixed fee when we come to do our invoice later on. Again, once we're happy that all of our relevant information is in here and correct, we can click save and close. Once we've checked our client card and our matter details, we can then go to our time and fees section of the matter and double check that all of our time recording has been entered correctly. If we notice that something is missing, we can use our new billable items button, which will allow us to enter any missing time or fees or cost recoveries. To do this, we check and input the correct date for the time or the fee. We can then check our billing stage is correct and that our activity rate is correct. If it, we need to change it, we can do so by clicking on the drop down. Then we can enter our activity. So in this instance, I'm going to say we did a call out. Put in a billing description. And then type in the number of units or calls. If I will have more than one item that is missing and I need to enter it, I can use the new item button at the bottom, which will give me an additional line. And again, I go through the process of entering the activity, billing description and number of units. Once we have entered everything we need on the new billable items screen, we can click save and close. Now that I'm happy that I've recorded all my time and fees in this section, I can do a, a quick double check on my office accounting and cost recoveries to ensure that any mileage or disbursements have been entered 
correctly. If I just go back to time and fees a second, there is a drop down next to new billable items, which will also allow me to record any bolt on payments, such as my adjourned hearing fee. To do this, again, we click on the little, the option, and then we can enter our billing description and the number of adjourned hearings to be claimed. Again, we need to double check our date is correct. And head to sit, save and close. Once we've checked that, as I said, any bolt on payments, times, fees or cost recoveries have been entered and I'm happy, I can go ahead and invoice this matter. Again, I'm going to use the drop down next to the new invoice button and this will allow me to select the level of work that I want to invoice at this time. For this one, I'm going to choose controlled work. When our invoice screen opens, you'll see on the top left hand side of the screen, we have all of our relevant reporting codes. So claim type, our matter type one and two codes, and the outcome for the client. We also have an area for you to record the number of medical reports claimed and whether a DAR was acted as a representative. This DAR is only relevant for certain case stage levels. Um, so if it is greyed out, then it is not applicable on that particular invoice. Um, for my matter, it is. You'll see at the bottom here, dependent on that case stage level that we selected in our matter details, we've also been awarded our particular fixed fee. However, we do still detail out the profit costs um, and the travel waiting that was recorded on our matter. And we've got our disbursements and our bolt-on payments on here as well. You will have a breakdown on at the bottom left of the corner, which will tell you um, the how the, the fee has been generated. So in this instance, it's fixed fee, bolt on payments and disbursements. In the top right corner, we have two date fields. Um, the first one is the date concluded. This is the date upon which your matter or the stage of the billing for that matter has completed. And that is the date which will be reported on the spreadsheet back to the LLA. The date bills is then critical for making sure that this invoice appears in the correct submission list. So we are currently billing for our October submission. I want this invoice to appear on in my October submission list. So I need to ensure that the bill date is set to an October date. Once I have set that, I can, if I want to use the word icon at the top to produce my word document for my CW1, my CW1 and 2 or my EC claim one, if, if that is relevant. Um, however, we can enter back into this invoice and do these later. Once I'm happy that I have filled in everything I need to fill in on this invoice screen and that my figures are correct, I can click save and close and that then posts my invoice to my uh, to my leap system and will put my claim on my submission list for October. At this point, our mental health matter is now billed and completed. So I will pass you over to Kirstine, who will take you through the same billing and process for your immigration matters. Thank you, Karen. Okay, so I've got an immigration matter here that I've previously opened and very much like Karen mentioned, one of the key elements you need to look for when setting up your clients is within the client card, just ensure you've got some personal details set up. So under the people tab, I'm just going to check I have a date of birth and under the custom tab, I'm just going to ensure I've got the reporting elements recorded for disability and ethnicity. 
You can use the drop down there to change any of the information as required. So we have disability, ethnicity, UCN and home office UCN. Once that information is set, um, if the client comes back and there are any further matters opened, you won't need to worry about resetting it. It's actually set against that card. With that information set, we can now do save and close. So the next area we need to look into is the matter details for the legal aid options. So once we enter into here, we're just going to check information such as the branch, uh, which will actually allocate regardless of whether we're working up to London or national. Um, you'll see here I've actually got GFS for the graduated fee scheme because that's what I'm going to run this matter under. So at the time of invoicing, I will be allocating a fixed fee to the invoice. But as I'm progressing through the case, I will be inputting my time elements, fixed fee and cost recoveries. You need to define the CLR status. And there's items such as procurement area, access point and AIT hearing centre. You can just use the drop downs to set the information that's relevant. Once we're happy with the information, we're just going to save and close to confirm it back onto the matter. And as mentioned previously, you can come back into the matter details at any time to amend or update or add in additional information as the case is being progressed. So if we go on to our time and fees, this is where we'll record all of our activities as we saw very much with the mental health. You'll have the option for the new billable items, which will bring up the input screen to allow us to record numerous activities that have taken place. The billing stage, we can have the option for controlled work, okay, or should later on the case progress, you can be able to select licensed work. The activity rate, you can select the hourly rates that you wish to record and using the drop down, select the relevant activity. You can enter in a billing description as needed and the number of units spent. Cost recovery items may also be recorded in here. And you can define as to whether they're inclusive of tax or not. And then just change the date in relation to when the actual activity took place. With the information set, we can just do save and close to post those items onto the time ledger. You've also got the option, as Karen touched on with the mental health one, for additional bolt-on payments, such as you may wish to claim for home office interview fees. You can enter in a description that's relevant enter in the number of home office interview fees whether or not there are any adjourned hearing fees and whether or not there have been any case management reviews you'll see as we're inputting this information the overall values are being automatically entered arising in an overall total of your bolt-on payments Again, change the date to be in relation to the date when the activities took place. With that information now set, as I've been working through the case, prior to billing, we just do a quick check. We have all of our time entries and our bolt on payments added. We can then move on to office accounting and cost recoveries and just ensure that all of our disbursements have also been recorded onto the matter. When we're ready to raise the invoice, use the drop down and select the relevant billing stage. This will then open up our invoice form and allow us to enter in the relevant reporting codes. As mentioned earlier, I'm recording this under the graduated fee scheme, so I'm going to ensure that I am selecting a fee that is relevant for the graduated fee scheme. So I've selected matter type one, matter type two, 
and what the outcome was for my client. You'll see on the fixed fee line, I've now been awarded a fixed fee that is relevant for the matter type one that I selected. We can change the date to be in relation to when the claim ended. And as Karen touched on, the date billed is key for the submission month that you wish this invoice to be included in. So I wish this to be in my October submission. Down at the bottom, it'll give you a total breakdown, just advising how your invoice total has been accumulated. So we have fixed fee, any bolt-on payments, such as the home office interview fee and case management fee I recorded, and any disbursement cost recovery items. We know that using the word icon, we can, if needed, go and populate any of the relevant legal aid agency billing forms, such as your controlled work one. Should this case have gone exceptional, I can also then go and generate the EC claim one. And again, we can come into here at any time to redo or to pre-populate this information. It's really optional as to whether you do it at the time of invoicing or doing it later on. I'm going to define that a postal application has been accepted, which was one of the September legislation changes that came into effect for all civil matters that has to be reported. Once I'm happy with my invoice, I'm just going to do save and close, which will then finalise it onto the client's office accounting ledger. And that submission has now been put into my submission list, which we will utilise later on when we get onto the point of showing you how to generate your CWA submission. So I'm now going to hand you back to Karen, who's going to walk you through working with a family matter at Controlled Work. Okay, um, thank you, Christine. As I said, as we were looking at our mental health and our asylum matter, within our family matter, we will need again to go and check our client information um, and our information in our matter details. Again, in the client card, we need to go to the people tab and check that we've got our date of birth and then that we've got our information in the custom tab, our disability, ethnicity, and again, our UCN. Once we're happy that we filled all of this in, we can click save and close. Then again, we need to go into our matter details and we will see a slightly different screen again for our family compared to our mental health and our immigration matters. But again, the information is similar that we need to check. So we need to check that we've got the correct branch, we've got the correct date opened. Then we need to check again our procurement area and access point and schedule reference. Again, like we saw with the mental health matter earlier, we will need to check enter a case stage level so that this will determine our fixed fee when we get to our invoice. Once we're happy that we've entered all of the information, we can click save and close. Now that we've checked that our client card is has got the relevant reporting information and the matter details, we can go to our time and fees and again check that our time recording is all correct. Um, and again, using our new billable items button, we can enter anything that is missing. Again, by entering our date, making sure our billing stage is correct, making sure our activity rate is correct, and then choosing our activity. putting in our number of units and again use our new item button if we have multiple lines to enter. I'm going to click save and close. Likewise if we've noticed that something is incorrect on here maybe we spent a little less time with our client in our initial meeting we can double click on that entry to open it up and edit any of the information within that batch of time recording. Once we've checked our time and fees, we can again go to our office accounting and the cost recoveries and enter anything disbursement wise that we need on here, either 
by the new billable items button for your mileage or other disbursements such as parking or by using the little drop down arrow and choosing whether it's a council fee or an expert fee. Again, for our expert fee, we are able to choose our expert group and our expert type. And it will offer up our legal aid approved fixed fee or hourly rate. We can over type that if we should so we should wish. If not, we can save and close. Now that I'm happy, all my time and fees have been entered and I have entered my disbursements that I require, I can go to our new invoice drop down and again select our controlled work so that we can populate our invoice screen. On our invoice screen, again, we have our matter type one and two codes to complete and our outcome for our client. And again, as determined by our case stage level that we entered on our matter details, we are presented with our fixed fee amount. We also detail out our profit costs, travel and waiting. We've also got our disbursement there. Again, date concluded is the date the level of work finished. And our date build determines which submission month this invoice is going to be saved to. So again, this is, we are doing our October submission. So we need this to be an October date. We can use our word icon again to create the relevant billing form. Or we can save and close and come back and do that later. Once I'm happy that all my figures are correct, I've entered all my reporting codes, um, I can say whether or not a postal application has been accepted prior or not. I can leave it blank and I can save and close. At that point, our family file is now invoiced and our invoice will be sitting on our October submission list. And I can pass you back to Kirsteen so she can take you through the submission process and creating your bulk load spreadsheet. That's great. Thanks ever so much, Karen. So as we've seen, we've walked you through, uh, obviously, just a very brief overview of how you can actually uh, generate your controlled work invoices for mental health, immigration and family. Now, one thing we actually suggest that you do do prior to actually raising your monthly submission is to actually just create a legal aid admin matter and what the advantage of that will be is it means that when the submission is generated it will automatically be saved onto that matter so you'll have all of your submissions in one central location uh, great reference to yourself and also great for any um, auditing requirements that may happen so we're just going to go back on to the new matter details Okay, so we're going to practice management and general. We're going to untick the auto generation and in the description, I'm just going to put in there um, LA admin matter. Now, what we've done is we'll need to obviously leave the billing mode as private. And at this point, we'll need to allocate a client. So we'll just put in LA admin. And there's my LA admin matter. We're then just going to do save and close purely just to commit this matter into the LEAP system. Now, one thing I will need to do is make a note of the matter reference number. So I'm just going to click on the drop down here and just do save to force it just to bring back a reference number for me. OK, so here I've got my reference number 442KB. What I need to do is actually record that against my legal aid information under tools and firm details. If you've got multi branches, you'll need to do this for each branch or alternatively, you may wish to set up an individual legal aid admin matter for each one. 
Okay, so purely just enter in my information and do save and close. And I'm just going to do that on the second branch as well. Once you've actually done this, you don't need to worry about doing it again, unless for any reason you wanted to start a new legal aid admin matter. With that information now set, I'm ready to actually generate my monthly submission. And that's just a simple task of clicking on Office Accounting and going to Legal Aid Monthly Submission. The invoice screen will list and we'll be able to see in there the three invoices that we've actually just gone through and generated. There's my family, my immigration, my mental health. Again, if you're a multi-branch firm, you can and you're working under two different contracts, you can choose which branch you want to generate the submission for. If you're just working under one contract, regardless of having multi-branches, you can just leave that as all. By default, the month will go to the previous month. So whilst we're in November, we know that it's October invoices and the October submission we wish to generate. You can select invoices on an individual basis or using the top checkbox, you can do a multi-select. Down at the bottom, it will give you an overall selected invoice total. And when you're ready to actually generate your submission, it's purely a case of clicking the create submission option. What that will do is it'll extract the selected invoices and it'll pre-populate the bulk load spreadsheet as supplied by the legal aid agency. It will also save, as mentioned, a copy of that onto the relevant admin matter that we've just seen, we've gone through and created. Okay, when that opens, it, it will take a little bit of time because obviously it's just going through and pre-populating. Um, there will be some validation checks that we can run, uh, purely just so that we can prove um, that the information we're putting on there is correct prior to us uploading it to the CWA portal. So you'll see on the front page, it's automatically entered in our legal aid information that was held within our um, firm details. And we have the option here to go to enter civil details. If we move on to enter civil details, you'll see there that it's populated my invoice as selected. We can also go on to the new matter start option and there we'll have recorded any schedule references and the number of new matter starts by matter type that the firm has generated. We're just going to return back onto the civil data page and you have an option here to run a data check. What that will do is just do a quick check over the information that we've pre-populated to ensure that we don't have any missing information. If we have any missing information, it will highlight it in orange for us. And we can either rectify it directly onto the spreadsheet or we can go back, make any revisions actually within the relevant matters that have the issues and then regenerate the spreadsheet as required. So we're just going to change these here on the spreadsheet for the moment. Once we've revised any of the um, validation errors that we've been advised about, you've then got the option to create civil bulk load file. That will then just extract all of the information and put it into the relevant format required by the CWA portal. Once it's actually saved all of that information, it will actually advise you as to where it has actually saved that file. And at that point, you'll need to make a note of the path that we are notified about. Okay, so there's the path that I mentioned that you need to make a note of. At this point, you will log into the CWA using your uh, credentials as given to you by the Legal Aid Agency, and there'll be an option in there for you to upload your submission. When you go to the option to upload your submission, there will be a browse button. On clicking the browse button, it is at that point, you will then need to browse into this folder location to find your file. 
That will then automatically upload into the portal. All invoices upload as draft. And uh, what you will then need to do is just verify and actually submit them through to finalize them in order for you to actually receive your monthly payment. Once that's gone through into the portal, what we do recommend that you do is come back into the listing of invoices and just with them all selected, or if for any reason you've previously closed this window down, just reopen the window from the Office Accounting Legal Aid Submission menu that we used. Ensure the invoices that you've submitted are selected and just mark them as submitted. That just ensures that nothing gets picked up again and goes through as a duplicate claim to the legal aid agency. So at that point, uh, we've actually finalized and gone through everything we wish to show you on the webinar. So, you know, thank you all ever so much for attending. Uh, one thing that we will say is, if you do need any assistance or guidance, you can contact our help desk team via live chat, which is by far the quickest way to get any support and assistance. We've also got a range of online training videos and community articles, uh, which again, will just walk you through step by step on how you can actually go about raising invoices, walking you through generating your submission exactly as what we've been working through today. So I hope you will find that very useful. Apologies, we've taken a little bit longer than originally anticipated. Um, if there have been any questions there, we will pick up and we'll email all, you know, each of you individually. So thank you all ever so much for watching. Thank you for your time.